Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at Yashima, Legend of the Kami Masters from Greenbrier Games. Uh, in this game, each player will have a deck of cards led by their Kami Master. Uh, and they will also have some type of uh, kami to go with it. Uh, so you'll be combining different sets of cards in order to make a deck, and then use that deck in order to maneuver around and deal damage to your opponents out on a hex-based grid. Uh, and the last man standing, or at least the last man uh, not restored, will be the winner. So real quick, we'll take a look at what you get inside of this box. We'll see how the game plays, and we'll come back at the end of the, at the, end of the video and get my opinions on Yashima. So here you can see the components for Yashima. Now Yashima comes with a variety of things. One, it comes with hexes with which you'll make up your board. Uh, there is a relic hex, and this relic hex is uh, just an area where you'll want to go in order to be able to focus, flip through your tome of cards faster. Uh, but otherwise, it's just kind of a combat arena. These hexes also have some special spaces. Some of them with the little foot on it, for example, will let you move there for free. Some with the skull are deadly and you must exert, which means get rid of a card from your draw pile in order to move there. Some will have difficult terrain, which means it costs extra movement to go there. Uh, and some are healing areas, which will let you heal if you flip through your tome while you're there, which takes a card from your discard and puts it back on bottom of your deck. Uh, so there's a variety of different types of terrain on these hexes. It's also going to come with a variety of different kami. Uh, these kami uh, are going to be different card types. So for example, we have dragon, tiger, phoenix, and tortoise, each of which have different abilities uh, a little bit. They're similar, but different. So for example, phoenix focuses on being fast, moving to places quicker, relocating, things like that. Tortoises uh, are very good at defending and uh, they get bonuses for not moving when they uh, are not rotating when they attack uh, and a variety of other things whereas dragons might allow you to um, you know put the cards back into your deck or move out of the way before an attack happens so there's a variety of different types of things uh, each of these one of the four kami decks there's also the kami masters that's these guys here which have a deck associated with them some of them will be able to give blind tokens which will slow down masters when they move uh, some will be able to chain attacks so if it has a chain keyword on it, you can play another one in order to deal more damage uh, as long as it has a certain karma value when you play that card. Uh, and then some of them will have burn tokens, for example. These burn tokens allowing you to burn a master and cause them damage over multiple turns. Uh, so each one of these, will you'll pick a kami master and you'll pick a kami, shuffle them together to make your deck. So real quick, why don't we set that up and we'll continue to talk about the game. All right, so here you can see Yashima set up for a two-player game. Uh, it's a two-player game, so we have three hexes. We have the relic hex and then the two starting hexes chosen by our players. Our players are out on their starting boards, and we have our starting tableaus set up. What you can see is a deck of card combined, combined of the Kami Master and Kami type that you chose. So we have Osamu here, who is playing tortoises, and we have Akiko here who is playing with tigers. Uh, so we've mixed up, she's got fire and tigers, and we have a chaining attack dude who does turtley things. Uh, in addition, you'll see that each player has their tome. So this is a tome, uh, it's a book basically formed by these cards, and you can flip through this tome on your turn to reveal new karma abilities. These karma abilities will get you let you do different things, like add status tokens to things, or spend attack actions to move, or if you flip the page, you can actually put this card on bottom of your deck by tearing it out of your book, uh, and it will let you uh, gain spirit status when it gets to the top of the deck, and he can use spirit status to do a variety of things. If you don't have spirit status, you can actually look at the cards in your battle deck and return them in any order you want. So. Uh, you can flip through this in order to get more abilities, with later abilities being different than different er, than earlier abilities. Each player also has a karma pool. These are just cards that they flipped out at the start of the game, and each card has a karma value. For example, this one uh, has a karma value of 5, uh, and the one here has a karma value of 1. You can spend these karma cards in order to play karma effects printed on things, or printed on the ability cards of whatever characters you might have. So, uh, if we look at Akiko's card here, she may have a karma effect that costs something not in this case but uh, she does have some in her tome so you can spend karma from your pool in order to play those effects uh, finally each player is going to have a hand of cards so this hand of cards is going to be basically all attack cards each attack card, if we show you, will look something like this. It's going to have a title, a karma value, which is only used when it's in this area out here as kind of a resource, an attack value, how much damage it does, uh, and then you'll see over here its attack 
pattern. So the green spot indicates where your Kami Master is standing. The hex grid represents, of course, the hex grid. The arrow represents your facing. And the red squares, or red hexes, I should say, indicate the area of effect. There are also abilities printed on cards that will oftentimes go off if your attack is successful. So this one says overrun, reload, uh, relocate adjacent to any target hit by this attack. So it lets you teleport basically when you hit. And other attacks will have different areas of effect. This one's in a straight line. Uh, this one is both in front and behind you. So uh, you'll have different attack cards with different abilities. Some of these may also have shield icons on them. You'll see that this one has a shield that can be used to defend against an attack and will have some effect if somebody attacks you and you use it to block. So that is the basics of the setup. Now on your turn, uh, basically you're going to first go through a series called Destiny. So in the Destiny step, uh, you're first going to go ahead and populate the action pool. Every round there will be tokens starting out for actions and it could be move or attack. And you'll always start with a move and then add an attack for the next player. And if there was a third player, we would add another move. Uh, so it would be a move, then an attack, then a move for each player in that order. In the case of two players, there's a move and an attack. Then each other player will grab a token and they'll choose a side to put out there. So we could say that one player chose move and the other player chose attack and they reveal them simultaneously, putting them out into the action pool. After we've done that, we're going to go on to the reconcile step. And this will allow you uh, to get rid of cards, which is called using them by putting them on bottom of your deck from your hand and then drawing back up to your hand size, which is dictated by your character. So in this case, three for this player uh, and four for the other player over here. So she has her hand of four. After that, we would go on to initiative and each player would reveal the top card of their deck uh, and add it to their karma pool. So we'll see that this player reveals a five uh, and this player reveals a three. That gives the player with the five the initiative and they will be the first player for this round and they will get to take their actions first. After we're done with that, we move on to the battle phase, which is where actions actually take place. And in the battle phase, you get one combat action, which will be either move or attack, and you get one karma action, which can be uh, either flipping another card into your karma pool, it can be flipping through pages in your book, or it can be using the karma in your pool to do an ability indicated by these icons. So on your turn, you do both of those things, one of each. So let's say that our first player decided to take a move token. He'd set that aside and he would get to move up to his speed, which is three. Now, when he moves through certain spaces, he gets to move there for free. So moving into a road is free. That costs nothing. Uh, then he can move here for one and then he could move all the way along this road for free and go two, three if he wanted to and move over to here. Or perhaps he's trying to get to this tile, two, three, and he stands on the relic. Either way, uh, he gets to move up to his movement and then rotate his facing whichever way he would like. Uh, after that, or before, whichever order he wants, he can take his karma action. So maybe he decides that he'd like to use one of his karma effects. For example, uh, if he wanted to, he could have done his karma effect first, discarded six karma worth of cards, and instead of using that move token uh, to uh, move, he could have taken a attack token to limit the pool and used it to move instead. So now there's fewer attacks out there to be made. Either way, uh, he could have used a karma effect. He also could have flipped out his deck if he wanted to instead of uh, spending something to get new karma effects. Uh, or he could have simply, just as I said, added another card to his supply as we showed just a minute ago. So he could flip out another one for more karma. After he's done, it would go on to the other player and they would have the option of taking one of these tokens. Perhaps they decide to take the attack this time uh, so that there's no attack left for the other player. When they attack, they would look through their cards and they would look for one with a pattern that would allow them to hit the other player. So for example, this one goes out to the left one and then it goes forward uh, and does not hit this player. So they wouldn't want to use that one. This one hits in this area right here, no good. Uh, but this one right here, if I look at it from my perspective, looks like it would hit uh, when I'm facing these areas and it would hit the player if I was standing, we'll just say I'm standing in the right zone. It would attack that player. Uh, so you would look for the right focus area to see if, it's, if he's in those red, red hexagons and see if it hits. If it does, it's going to deal damage equal to the attack. 
If the player is unable to block or chooses not to block, they're going to take three attack damage in this case. And that will cause them to lose, which is a keyword in this game, they're going to lose life from either their hand or their deck, which is essentially cards. So they would flip cards out or discard them from their hand in order to lose that life. Other cards will have the word use, which will let you put cards on bottom of your deck from your hand. Uh, or heal, which will let you take cards from the bottom or from your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck. Or even exert which is to discard from the top of your deck uh, out into your discard pile. So there's different keywords for moving cards around to different areas. If you played this attack card and the other player decided to block, if they have any block cards in hand, which this player does not, uh, they would get to respond. So let's find a block card real quickly uh, and just look at what it does. So this one here uh, is called Riposte or Riposte. I don't know how to say that word. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it says when used, lose this card. So you would get rid of it uh, and prevent two damage and deal three damage to the attacker. So in this case, I would only take one uh, and I would deal three back to that player. So that would be pretty good. Uh, it's a good response to being hit and I would get rid of that card and the other player would lose their card as well for attacking. Uh, and that would basically be a round. And so each player would get two actions. So now the next player would have the chance to move. And of course, you their karma action uh, and continue on in this manner. And basically you're going to play in this way until a player runs out of cards in their deck uh, and in their hand. And they are going to then have to restore or recover at the end of their turn. What that will do, it will cause them to flip their card over. They're going to get rid of their karma supply and they're going to reset, uh, getting a hand of four and a karma of three, flipping out new cards. And now they're unable to win the game, but they continue playing to affect the game. In a two player game, that would end it because when all of your opponents have restored, uh, the game is over. But in a multiple player game, you would keep on playing to affect the battlefield as the game goes on. Um, in this manner, you're going to try and eliminate all of the players or get them all to that recovery or restored status and be the only player that's not restored in order to win. If everybody gets knocked out at the same time, uh, there's a tie and the game ends in that manner. Uh, there are a couple other minor things such as uh, abilities that happen when you flip karma cards out. Certain cards have little icons on them that have an effect when they come into play. Uh, and there's some abilities to equip items to your guys, but they usually get torn out of these books and give you more karma effects. But over Overall, you're going to be trying to manipulate this token pool, uh, manipulate the position of tokens for burning, dealing damage each round, or blinding, uh, and attacking your opponent to deal them damage to eliminate cards from their deck in hand, and the player who best does this will be the winner. And there you have it, that is Yashima from Greenbrier Games. Uh, so there's several things about the game that I do enjoy, uh, and I'm going to have to you know, preface that with the overall this isn't really a game for me, but uh, let me talk about what I do enjoy and what I don't enjoy. So I like the concept of combining together two decks in order to make a, a unique strategy every game. So you have your leader and your, your kami, uh, and however they combine will make a new strategy for playing. Um, that's that's kind of cool, and games like Smash Up have done this for a little while now. Uh, the concept is cool there. Uh, I also like the uh, kind of template layout of the way you attack on cards, uh, but the concept of facing in the game and being able to face whatever way you want during your turn kind of ruins that a little bit. I guess maybe forcing you to turn as part of your movement um, or uh, using some of your movement to turn might be a good idea uh, in strategy wise. Um, finally, I like the idea of the, the tome spell books where you're flipping pages and trying to go back and forth through those to find the things that you like and the fact that you can even tear pages out in order to get some embedded abilities. So that's pretty cool. Uh, overall, what I didn't like, uh, I don't like the concept that if I'm knocked out of the game and I become restored, so I come back to life, uh, especially in a multiplayer game, in a two player game this doesn't matter, but in a multiplayer game I come back and now I am in the game but unable to win. Uh, I can still hurt other people, uh, I still affect other people, but I no longer have the option of winning, so now the best I can do is knock everybody out at the same time and hope for a tie. Uh, I don't know, that just doesn't do it for me. It seems like it unnecessarily extends the game. Uh, I'm also not sure as to the balance of the combined decks, not really sure if they're balanced. Uh, we played a couple games, they didn't really seem balanced to me insofar as uh, every time we played one deck just kind of uh, trounced the other, and I've heard uh, kind of similar things online, or actually opposite things online with different decks of balance. So uh, it seems like it's all over the place. That may mean it's balanced, uh, may mean it's not. I have not played enough times to definitively make that call. Uh, but overall, some interesting aspects. Uh, 
when you throw them all together, the game comes out a little bit longer than I would like, and so I guess that's the main reason uh, that I probably won't be keeping Yashimo. But if it sounds good to you, uh, or you like the idea of the game, definitely check it out. That's Yashima from Greenbrier Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.